Good afternoon, Train 2.0 YouTube subscribers. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Jason Yi from Train 2.0. This is the 8020 show where we're going to talk about right now the 8020 principle and applying it to hockey. And the reason I'm here talking to you today, the smart, oh, I'm getting a bit of an echo here, the smart ones, I know that, I know that, the committed, dedicated, focused ones, because who else is searching around on YouTube, coming across this stuff? This is for you, because I was in your shoes. I was, my goal was the NHL. My goal was to play in the NHL, and I worked as hard as I could. I studied as much as I could to make it there. And since I've finished playing, and in my last few years of playing, when I started learning from myself, I started learning that there was things I was missing, not because it was really anyone's fault, just because the information wasn't there. So Train 2.0, the 8020 show, is, is a discussion around moving you guys forward by focusing in, honing in on the vital, the vital 20%. Now, I always forget to get the picture ready, but here it is. <laughs> Give me a second. Here it is. This is it. This is the 80-20 law in practice right now. Think of this. Think of the stuff on the red as being the 20%, the vital 20% of the skills. And think of the stuff in the blue as being the, the irrelevant 80% or you know less relevant 80%. My hypothesis and... When, I, when you hear my hypothesis, think if this fits what you're seeing right now. Think of, think of this, if this prediction, if this model is fitting what you're seeing right now. Where there is these hidden 20% of skills that lead to 80% of the results. Might this explain why some players who have the same amount of practice time as you or your kid, or whoever, just seem to always be ahead? Is there some 20% of vital skills that most players are missing, that most coaches are missing, because they're focused on the <laughs> irrelevant 80, or the irrelevant 90 in some cases? So that is, that is the 80-20 that is the principle in action. And the big reason why I'm here is I want to have that discussion and hone in on that 20% and explain it really, really well to you so that you can take that 20% or the 10% or the 5% and exponentially improve your game. Literally exponentially. Look at, look at the curve again. Look what happens when you get closer to the right. Exponential improvements. So I want to find those things, those levers that are going to take you to the next level. So in this chat today, quickly, very quickly, we talk about the myth of bottom hand shooting. Now I know you've seen the videos, you've heard the people say, you gotta flex the stick. You're right, you have to flex the stick. You guys have seen the, the, the pictures of Patrick Laine bending a stick in half. And you're saying, wow, that guy's getting great flex on his stick. Must be that bottom hand. Here's the thing. Remember, there's the drones, there's the surface thinkers, and then there's you guys. Okay? And the surface thinkers, these are the people who, if they were driving the Titanic today, they'd still crash it into the friggin' iceberg because they're just seeing what's on the surface. This is something I call the look-feel paradox. So there's a difference between how it looks and how it feels. And then if you can dive into that paradox, you can figure out what's actually happening and you can move towards, you guessed it, 
that vital 20%, the vital 10%, the vital 5% that makes all the difference. So we talked about this with skating the other day, like yesterday. Skating, look, feel paradox. Everyone says push with your toes because they see the toe come off the ice last. But if you experience the feel of it, you'll understand something different. Everyone sees Patrick Kane's fast hands and they say, stick handle fast. But what's the feel of it? If you understand the feel, and if you start moving more and more towards the feel, you also start honing in more and more on that vital 20%. Look what happens when you get up that curve. You take off. And remember, does that explain what you're seeing around you? Does that explain why some players get ahead and stay ahead? Does, does it explain why some players fall off? I don't know. Think about it. That's what I see. Um, but I could be wrong. But think about it. So let's take a look at the grip here. Um, we've got Mr. Austin Matthews here. Oh, and that's, look at that good looking guy. And so what's going on here? You know, everyone says, oh, look at that flex in the stick. There's that bottom hand. But the interesting thing is it has nothing to do with the bottom hand. The bottom hand is like a helper, right? Imagine if you had like, um, let's say, I'm trying to think of this. Imagine a bow and arrow. You got a bow and arrow. We don't say that that the key to the bow and arrow is letting go of the string, but that's basically what the bottom hand does, is it's just a part of the bow and arrow, right? It follows along. In fact, when you have the NHL grip code, when you're using the stick correctly, when you load the top hand correctly and create tension through your stick that way, not through some pattern drawn on the floor, not through leaning on it more with your bottom hand, with generating tension through the stick to create that bow and arrow effect with your top hand, then you're getting that right feel. And a lot of you guys will not believe me, and that's okay, but watch, pay attention. You're going to notice that there are some players that seem to have this effortless, deceptive shot that just, boom, pops off their stick. Then you'll see some that are very predictable, players that are very, very predictable in their shooting. Um, you can actually see, you know when they're shooting, or you can see them loading their body. That is a sign of bottom hand shooter. Okay. Then you're going to see some inconsistent shooters. That is a sign of someone who goes between a top hand and bottom hand shooter. So. The key to today's NHL shot, and if you want to go back to, if you want to look at like um, Gretzky shooting or like Yager's, you know, are the the relic of the past who's still going, right? He shoots sort of that with that synergistic both hands doing the work thing. But if you look at the young players who have grown up with carbon fiber hockey sticks, they're shooting a different way. They're not using their bottom hand. Their bottom hand is like a helper. They're not flexing the stick much with the bottom hand. People are gonna get pictures and show me and they're gonna watch, they're gonna say, oh yeah, look at this picture, look at that. It's obviously the bottom hand, right? <laughs> maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Look at this, look, look. If you're happy with your shot, you're not watching this, right? You're happy, you're like, ah, I don't need this. If you're not happy with your shot, you're wondering, huh? <laughs> I wonder if I'm missing something. Hint, yeah, you're missing something. Okay, so in the membership area, I have the source code drills, which are the progressions. The progressions walk through and talk through of how to learn, boom, automatically, literally, bang, automatically, any age, any size, any skill level. You fit, start with the NHL code grip. You make a little change there, and then you do this drill that automatically forces you to use the right top hand mechanics. 
that's in the membership area. So if you if you're a member and you're watching and you haven't tried it yet, go and go and give it a shot. At first, it's gonna feel weird, it, especially if you're a bottom hand shooter. You're gonna say, "I'm not as powerful. I'm not as good." And I'll say, "That's that's part of it for the first little bit." Right? Um, my shot for a long time was very very bottom hand dominant because I was told flex the stick, flex it. And I was great at flexing the stick when I had the time and the um, setup to get that stick flex bottom hand shot off. But the wizard, bang, shot on and off their stick, right? Patrick Kane, bang, on and off his stick. Why? It's been a mystery up until this point. Right? One reason is, is the around the back, how he combines it. Again, that's in the membership area. And... The, and just so you know, I'm going to have to take off in like five minutes. So as I'm talking here, um, ask your questions because I got to go quickly. So we're wondering what's going on here. How can this guy use this stick flex? What's, what's different about, about this? You guys might be wondering, thinking. Like I said, you're going to notice, you're going to think of those players on your team who have that whip-like release, that whip-like shot. Like I said, if you have any questions, you might want to ask them now because I'm going to have to take off very quickly here. And if you're wondering if my shot looked like that before, right, that guy in the, in the red in the second clip, that's me. If you're wondering if my shot looked like that before, it did not. It looked very laborious. <laughs> And, you know, an interesting thing was, um, I was in, I think I might have told this story before, but I was in my first or second year at university, and I went and talked to, because I would always do this, I'd talk to usually the most skilled players on the team, the smartest players on the team, and then the goalies, which were usually the smartest player on the team as well, because um, they had to read and think about so much. And I said to the goal, one of the goalie one day, he's a very smart guy, and he said, he said, what can I do better? And he says, you're very predictable. I can read you very easily. I say, well, what does that mean? What do I need to do differently? He's like, he's like, I don't know. Just don't be so predictable. And this was a really smart guy. And as you can imagine, that wasn't, that was like interesting information, but it wasn't coachable information I could change. And so one of the things I realized was that anytime I wanted to get any effort behind a pass, my common mechanic, because I didn't use the wizard, the magic mechanics, was to get my whole body and lean my bottom hand into a pass or a shot. So from a mile away, the goalie could read what the hell was happening. There was no surprises there. When I talk about this, that being my shot, the biggest change that I've made recently has been learning to load with the top hand, having the mechanics to do that. And it requires way, 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 way less effort, way less energy. Now, do you still use your bottom hand? I'm gonna answer your question here just now. How much should we use the bottom hand then? You should still use it. But it, and, and like I said, if you are tuning into this, my guess is you think that there's some more improvement that you guys can have in your shooting or your passing. That's my guess, that's my, my, my hallucination. Like I said, people, I don't think Steven Stamkos is tuning into this shot. I don't think he's worried about these things, right? So if you are using your mechanics correctly, if you're loading with your top hand correctly, then the bottom hand just ends up becoming like fuel on a fire. So depending on how much weight you need to put in the shot, you'll dial up and down your bottom hand. But your top hand should be the consistent thing, the thing that's always working, the thing that's always doing the work. The problem is, is that most people use 100% bottom hand all the time. And it's not their fault, they've been told to do so, they've been coached to do so. Proof is in the pudding here. All right, you can just see how how he just simply is turning and he's using that whip of the stick. And remember, this was not a technology 
that was around before, this whip of the stick, and particularly the whip coming from the blade of the stick. So these kinds of things are, um, this, is, this is new, right? It's like relatively new, like within 10 years. So people haven't had a chance to catch up. Um, so I, I hope that answers your question just now. I've got like 45 more seconds for a question. So if you have one, ask it now. If not, check out the Train 2.0 membership area because legitimately I made it as easy as possible to for you to learn this top hand mechanic. So the link is there. You can get the free training. You can literally start right now. Boom. Like, bang. Like, as fast as it takes Kane to release a shot, you can get started and learn the exact drills, the exact progressions, with the exact talk through, with the exact videos <laughs> of how to use the, the, your mechanics properly. And I promise you it's going to literally unlock your basically entire gameplay because it's going to change everything. So I want to get this out there because it's needed to be out there. So the strategy for getting the shot off when you enter the zone is to use footwork, is to use your deception um, through your footwork. That's something called the finisher's formula in the membership area. Um, hints are dropped in the Eric Carlson deception guide. And hints are talks when I talk about McDavid's skating, McDavid's drive wide, and what was the other one? Don't remember. Hints, 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 hints. Um, and what I like to do with these hints here, I like to um, draw your guys' attention to stuff. And I've told you, 80-20 is my method. I think the thesis holds up. Let me know if you think it holds up in your eyes too. Think about it. Think if there's, if, if there's skills and player, players that seem to have these magical skills that, again, the look-feel paradox that aren't necessarily easy to see, but it might be a different feeling if that thesis holds true. If you want to, so if you want to think about entering the zone, strategies for entering the zone, I have some seeds, I have some ways to point, I have a method, the 80-20 principle. If you want to be just shown step by step how to go there, that's in the membership area. So I have four moves that are part of what I call the finishers formula. And again, step-by-step -step walkthrough in there. I suggest you check it out. Guys, thank you for watching today. Really appreciate it. And let's hone in on that 80-20 together. Peace out.